Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is the Roscoe Manufacturing Sage Edition K9 Barrel. In development for over two years. Uh, you're starting to see some social media about this, and of course I was going to re release a video, but because my primary job is instructing and not doing YouTube videos, I uh, didn't get it out as soon as I'd wanted to, but I'm getting it out now. I want to tell you guys, and I'm really excited to tell you guys, even though there's been some, some discussion about it prior to the launch, of what the barrel is. 12.5 inch, and probably the thing that stands out to most people and the thing that we've gotten the most questions about is patrol length gas system. It is not a mid-length, it is not a carbine, it is a in-between length of gas system. And the whole reason for that, when we, when Roscoe approached me about this over two years ago and said we're looking at doing kind of a hybrid gas system type barrel, we want some input, some ideas, I was like, well, why not optimize the 12.5 for suppressed use? Uh, generally, barrels that run really well suppressed will also run well unsuppressed. That's not always the case. So we wanted to find a Goldilocks relationship of gas system length to minimize stresses on the bulk air group and allow the gun to run suppressed and unsuppressed. Yes, you can suppress a mid-length 12.5. They can be very finicky and it generally beats up the bulk air group. Exceptions, of course, are warranted and allowed. A lot of guys play with the gas port size, which is a direction you can go. When it comes to the DI gun, there's only so many different ways to tune the gun reliably with a minimal introduction of additional parts such as adjustable gas box. Not that there's anything wrong with that, uh, but I kind of just want to throw a gas block on it, have it run. Uh, so patrol length gas was the length that we settled on. I named it patrol length because it needed a name and I thought it fit nicely in between mid length and carbine length. Uh, right now, patrol length gas is available on the 12.5 Sage Dynamics Edition K9. The other features of the barrel, of course, are the fact that it's 12.5 inches, obviously. So it'd be something that would go into an SBR or an AR pistol. The barrel is also 416R stainless versus some other material. Uh, if you're familiar with barrel materials, you probably know that 416R is very well tuned, I guess. Probably tuned to be the wrong word. Very well liked for precision applications. It's not a harder use barrel. And I've gotten the question again, because there is a Sage Dynamics Edition rifle available from Sons of Liberty, guys are like, well, why isn't this 12.5 in your Sons gun? Why isn't your Sage barrel in your Sage rifle? And that's a very legitimate question. And the answer is actually pretty easy. Two, two, two really good answers for that. One, barrel wasn't ready. Two, uh, the Sage rifle, the barrel that's in the Sage rifle, I wanted something that was gonna be accurate and for hard use. A 416R barrel is probably not something that you would regularly shoot high volumes of your suppressor is glowing red hot volumes of fire. Uh, it's for, you know, like protracted range lessons, protracted range classes, uh, high round counts, burn downs that some people might do, uh, things of that nature. It's still going to provide you uh, MOA or better accuracy, but it wasn't intended for precision applications. Precision, of course, being a relative term in that explanation. Other things, of course, that are specific about the K9 barrel, uh, besides the material weighing in it, just, uh, just over, barely over 27 ounces. It's got a continuous barrel profile, which I know a lot of people would prefer, and then it's a one and seven twist. Standard gas block sizing with a thread of one and a half by 28, so nothing surprising here. And barrel crown, we went with an 11 degree barrel crown, which I think is a, a better place to be. Finish it in nitride, because that's a pretty common finish. Um, Full disclosure, of course, it's got my name on it, so it should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. This isn't a review. I'm not showing you guys a review of the barrel because I can't review something that's my, on my name on. Not only would it be unethical, in some cases it's probably illegal, because uh, then it would be ad copy and not a review, so I gotta be very careful about the terminology there. So I'm saying right out now, not doing a review. When you order the K9 barrel, and you should, from Roscoe, you're gonna get it as a kit. So you're gonna get your barrel and your patrol length gas system, so you're gonna be able to put everything together on your build or have your gunsmith professionally replace it or you professionally replace it. Whoever's gonna replace it, you're gonna get everything you need. For my own personal use, I have it in a Cobalt Kinetics rifle, clearly a 12.5 and it's an SBR, and I'm also installing one in a uh, ADM, and I plan to throw in a few other rifles. The vision I had, I guess, 
it seems a little pretentious to use the term vision regarding something as mundane as a barrel. But there are some unique things about it, obviously the most unique thing being the new gas system length. And of course, you don't trust it, because it's the first time you've heard of it, especially you guys who are way more knowledgeable about the building of ARs and you get into the fine minutia and detail of ultimate recipe of performance. I totally get it. Uh, if it's unproven, it's got to be tested. Clearly, since my I'm attached to the barrel, I assisted in, in the design and the implementation of it, uh, I'm not going to test it. You shouldn't take my word for it. You should uh, seek out a verifiable third party who is going to do testing on it. I know there's some guys out there that are already doing it. I wanted a barrel that gave me shortage length, but also maximized precision. Sometimes when we go shorter, we forget that short barrels are still very capable of being extremely precise. I've got more than a few barrels that are sub 14 inches that are sub MOA. Some of them are half MOA guns when they're nice and cool and I've got the right ammunition in them. When they heat up, they warm up, they're still sub MOA, which is what I'm looking for. I wanted something that was going to give someone a smaller compact package, but still be able to deliver a greater degree of precision or um, somebody who just wanted to build kind of a almost like a re, uh, reverse stretch as they call it um, something that's not as long as the front but still maintains the same characteristics of a rifle that's traditionally much longer and there's a lot of different barrel lengths and barrel profiles out there so if this one doesn't appeal to you that's okay I'm not trying to sell this barrel to everybody I'm just trying to make you aware that it exists the standout feature of course is the way the patrol length gas system functions with this barrel the gun you're gonna put it in Suppressed or unsuppressed, uh, I've got a lot of 12.5 guns, or I've owned a lot of 12.5 guns. I don't have too many of them anymore because some of them can be quite finicky, especially those with the mid-length gas system. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with mid-length gas. It's just very, it's got to be done perfectly on a 12.5 gun. Uh, if you have a 12.5 gun that functions fine uh, with mid-length gas, then congratulations, you've got one of those guns. Plenty of people, uh, my sample size being, of course, all the classes I teach, the rifles I see in them, I see various gas systems, various approaches to the problem, and when 12.5 and mid-length get together, they more often than not do not perform as well as they should. They either perform really well unsuppressed, and if the guy doesn't have a suppressor, he'll never know the difference, or they perform really well suppressed, um, but at a cost of, well, the shooter going through quite a few different configurations, gas box, gas systems, different barrels, different gas port sizes, things like that. Uh, and there's only so many different ways to tune the DI, like I said, without introducing additional parts. And some things are permanent, like your gas port size, your gas system, like that's not going to change. Uh, there are some gimmicks out there that can help you address that problem, but if you get a barrel in a certain length that accepts a certain gas port size, you may end up married to that system, and then you try to find a way to make it work, and it doesn't always work. So with patrol length gas, we're trying to find a gas system like that will probably be adopted by other barrel manufacturers that softens out and optimizes the performance in between our two traditional gas lengths to give us another option. And more options is never a bad thing. If the barrel's 416R, it better be accurate, right? And that's definitely a thing. Of course, this isn't a review, so you gotta take this for what it's worth. Again, not a review, but I'm already getting sub MOA groups out of this barrel. Uh, the, my preferred, I used to shoot a lot of 77 grain Black Hills, the OTM match, or actually I should just say OTM because open tip match, so I just said open tip match match anyway. Uh, but Atlanta Arms Elite Series, their 77 grain TMK is marginally more accurate. So that's been an ammo, even though it is a little bit harder to find than Black Hills, which I didn't think was possible. Uh, being that we're in ammo scare number like nine at this point, uh, mid 2022, uh, I'm still using the 77 grain TMK from Atlanta Arms, their Elite Series. Great round, and uh, it does provide me a higher degree of precision, marginally so, than what I was getting consistently from Black Hills. And some of my rifles that didn't really care for Black Hills, especially when suppressed, are now feeding and performing very happily shooting the Atlanta Arms ammunition. So I'm getting really good performance, really good consistent performance out of this barrel. And like I said, a semi away is never anything to sneeze at. You can, of course, run this barrel as you would a traditional AR. You can get out there and you can bang out 60 rounds in 10 seconds or, or whatever you need to do with it. But 416 being stainless, it's that softer material compared to other materials that barrels are made out of, uh, you're not going to get the same service life. And the whole idea behind this barrel was something that can handle intermediate, the occasional heavy use, but its, its main priority was going to be that precision. Um, and we're getting into the, the margins of degrees, but we get into the margins of degrees and we talk about precision anyway. Uh, an MOA gun will shoot an average group size that's an inch. And if you're not familiar with an inch, you'll know that shooting 5.56, five, none of those bullet holes are necessarily going to consistently touch each other. But everybody has it in their mind, or a lot of people, I should say, have it in their mind that all those bullet holes have to touch each other. 
if all your bullet holes are touching each other, that gun is sub MOA. So shooting MOA groups, sometimes like, oh, that's not very good. I'm like, no, actually that's, that's MOA. Um, you're gonna see sub MOA accuracy out of this barrel. You're gonna see really good performance. And for those of you that shoot suppressed, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised at the recoil pulse, especially when you pair this with like an A5 uh, buffer tube buffer system you're gonna get a very pleasant sewing machine, like almost like rocking a baby to sleep type of recoil pulse from this gun. Sometimes gas system to barrel length to suppressor to bolt carrier group can make the gun feel very um, punchy, if you will. Uh, not something I've experienced on this particular gun, uh, or I should say this particular barrel in the guns that I have it in so far. Uh, so it's going to, hopefully I'm putting some of those questions to rest but obviously don't trust me on this. Definitely verify. Uh, look for third parties who are doing reviews on the burial, of course, or you know, if, you've, if you wanna check it out, go ahead and pick one up, throw it in your favorite upper or lower receiver kit for whatever purpose it is, and go ahead and run it. And I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised, especially those of you who shoot suppress, but anybody in general, at how well the patrol length gas system lends itself to this particular barrel length. Uh, would this gas system work on other barrel lengths? Sure. I mean, I've seen carbine length on a 16-inch before. It didn't make a whole lot of sense, but for that particular guy and that particular setup and whatever he was trying to accomplish, it was working for him. Uh, not something I would personally do. So you can use patrol length on other barrel lengths. I think you're probably going to see other people do it on different lengths besides 12.5. But for right now, this is what you're getting in this particular configuration. Uh, it's definitely something inside Roscoe's wheelhouse to reduce, to release the patrol length in something a little bit more hard use. Uh, maybe for guys that shoot select fire, which is obviously a much smaller category, or people like myself who generally will go to the range and do three to 500 rounds of practice in a short period of time possible, or take a thousand round over two day rifle course. This isn't necessarily the barrel for that if that's something you do regularly. Every now and then, cool, but your overall round service life is not gonna be nearly as high considering um, the type of use that you're gonna put the barrel through. Cause uh, I've definitely ruined some 416 hour barrels just because I was using the rifle in a manner not recommended by the manufacturer. So if you're curious about the K9 barrel, Sage Dynamics Edition K9 barrel with the patrol line gas system from Roscoe Manufacturing, hopefully this video answers some of those questions. And again, seek out those third party reviews and check out what other people are saying about the barrel. Uh, don't just listen to me. I'm Eric Allen with Sage Dynamics, train accordingly.